easy, fast, and mostly affordable beef bone broth. You can make it yourself right at home in the pressure cooker, and I'm going to show you how. If you enjoy fast, easy, delicious recipes, then click the bell and subscribe, and you'll be notified on your homepage every time we upload a new recipe. So let's start on this bone broth. Now you can see here, I purchased from the grocery store in the freezer section, some soup bones. They're beef bones, and they, see that center? That's marrow in there. Um, and that will add to the flavor. Um, if you know someone who has uh, a cow in their freezer, they may have some soup bones from um, when they had the cow processed. So you might ask, they might just give you some. But if you're gonna purchase some at the grocery store, like I did with these, they cost, they're very inexpensive. Those uh, four bones came in a package together and I think they were $2. So um, you just put your bones in the bottom of your pot and then you're gonna want to gather up an onion, a couple of carrots, and some celery. And you don't have to worry about peeling these or preparing them in any way, just rinse them off, get the dirt off of them. You don't even have to take, just pull off whatever papery skin is on the outside of those onions. Leave the rest of the skin on because that will add some nice color to your bone broth. It doesn't hurt anything, it's not gonna come off. You're not gonna eat the onion anyway. It's just for flavor. And then um, you don't have to buy the beautiful carrots. <laughs> I bought the big ugly carrots that people use for juicing and you just cut them in a few pieces. I mean you could put them in their hole but they won't, mine wouldn't fit. See they're big chunky ugly carrots. It doesn't matter. Just cut them up into you know several inches long. You don't have to peel them. Just rinse the dirt off of the outside of the carrot. And then celery. Go ahead and get the celery that has the tops on it. It's cheaper, and those tops have a lot of flavor in them. So don't cut those off and throw them away. Put them in your stock. And in fact, if you'll buy those all the time, when you, um, and you're not going to use the tops for other applications, so just stick them in the freezer in a Ziploc bag. They don't have to be beautiful when you put them in a stock. And then anytime you want to make a stock, you've got, you know, carrot ends and pieces and celery ends and pieces and tops of onions and that kind of thing. And that makes great stock. So put that all in the pressure cooker. And then you are going to add water up to, now on my pressure cooker and probably on yours, you're not supposed to fill it more than three quarters full. So for mine, that's about a gallon. And I'm gonna add a gallon of water. On yours, it might be a little more or a little less, but don't fill it more than three quarters full. And the reason they say that is because as it starts to boil, it can splash up onto the vent and plug the vent. And that, if you get a plugged vent, that's a real problem. It can cause an explosion. So once you get your water poured in there, or maybe before if you want, add a teaspoon of salt and a teaspoon of pepper, um, and that just adds some flavor. There's my salt and pepper going in. Um, and then you wanna set the stove on high, let and close the vent so that it comes to pressure more quickly. And um, let it come to pressure, and then turn the heat down to low, enough so that you maintain full pressure, but you don't want it just like uh, cracking away over there. You just want it to be a gentle full pressure. Um, you'll see, I'll put the lid on here, and get it going. And uh, you're gonna then let it cook for two hours. Don't disturb it, don't stir it, don't do anything. Just leave it alone and let it cook, two hours. Then when you take the top off, you will have a beautiful clear broth if you carefully ladle it out. Don't stir it up. You'll get all kinds of, uh, the meat will break apart and the vegetables will break apart and that kind of thing. You can strain it through a, through a strainer or through cheesecloth if, um, if you have a lot of junk in yours. So you'll see, I'm gonna dip some out here in just a second. 
and it makes a beautiful clear broth. Don't try to get everything out of the bottom or you will have a lot of junk in your broth. But it's great and then you can use it in all kinds of things, soups and other dishes. Use it like you would use water in uh, savory dishes. Look how pretty and clear that is. If you want to get the fat off of it, take the whole thing and set it in the fridge overnight. The fat will congeal on the top and you can just scrape it off with a spoon. So there you go. Join us over at Dorks with Sporks on our podcast or at loavesanddishes.net for the full recipe with all the measurements and all the questions answered and tips and tricks and all that stuff. Okay, I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Hey, this is Wendy. Thanks so much for watching this video. Wherever you download